Hi, it's Alyssa with another Animal Crossing Halloween video. In my quest to draw every single Animal Crossing villager and special character, I neglected just one character. And some claim that he's not real, and he's just an urban legend and just a playground rumor, but others claim to have seen this mysterious dog named Brutus. So we're gonna talk about him a little bit in this video, the rumors and the legends, and work on a speed paint of him. It should be a lot of fun and not scary at all, right? Right? So, goofy intro aside, this is a playground rumor urban legend character named Brutus. And I had never heard of this particular playground rumor growing up. I had heard other things and some things that turned out to be true, like the gyroid face glitch, which I'll talk about in a moment. But I had never encountered rumors about Brutus or fan art of Brutus until I went looking for like Halloween stuff I could do for Animal Crossing speed paints for the channel. And of course I did the three speed paints I did last week of Jack and Wisp and Katrina. And I have a piece that I'm posting tomorrow that's a Halloween-y piece with a couple different characters. That'll be fun to see tomorrow. But in doing my research, I guess, I came across like a page about urban legends and video games and things like that. And one of them mentioned uh, the gyroid glitch as well as Brutus. And I didn't know about this particular <laughs> character legend until I watched a couple of YouTube videos about him and saw some pieces of fan art. And I thought, well, while I'm drawing all the characters, I think it would be only fitting if I also drew this character. And there's a couple different ideas about what exactly Brutus looks like, according to legend. Uh, some think he's just a typical dog character with the long ears, but others that insist that he's a bulldog, and I personally think the name Brutus just suits a bulldog better. And it's also more interesting to have a villager that's not a typical species type like that. Doesn't look like every other dog villager, looks a little bit different. I think that's a little bit more intimidating to run across. And if you've never heard this particular urban legend of Brutus, let me fill you in on what people claim uh, Brutus does in the game if you encounter him. First, it's claimed that he appeared only in the GameCube Animal Crossing game, though less commonly people will claim that he appeared in other games in the series. The urban legend started with the GameCube game originally, and people would claim that he would move into your village only for one day, uh, and then he would leave, and you didn't want to run into him because he would glitch out your game, he would send you letters in binary code, he was just creepy, if you walked into his house it was full of fish that would like instantly freeze your game, Stuff mainly involving corrupting game data, talking in creepy phrases or binary code, and just generally being weird and something that you wouldn't ever want to encounter in your game. Now, in my opinion, if I was a kid again and I had heard this urban legend, I would actually probably be inclined to believe it. Only because there are two things that happen in the GameCube game that I find creepier or just as creepy as the whole Brutus thing. So Rossetti, if you haven't played the older Animal Crossing games and never encountered Rossetti, his whole shtick was in the GameCube game to discourage you from not saving when something uh, disfavorable happened to you. Uh, there was an autosave back then, so people would try to quit without saving. And to discourage that, Rossetti the mole would pop up in front of your house and would give you a big lecture about how you need to save your progress and blah, 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 to discourage you from doing that. But some people like to push the limits and see how much they could tick off Rossetti and a dear friend of mine loved doing this. And it got to the point where I think if you don't save and reset, I can't remember if it was a specific number of times or if the likelihood of this happening increases every time you do it, but he would get increasingly angrier and angrier and angrier to the point where he would pretend to delete all your game data because he had just had it with you. And to a very young kid, I could understand that being very, uh, upsetting, scary, uh, you know, tear-inducing. Luckily, I knew ahead of time before witnessing this uh, at my friend's house, before I witnessed this, I knew that it wasn't real, that he wasn't actually deleting the game data. But if somebody was mean enough to trick me into thinking that that was real, I would have totally believed it as a little kid. And I think that's just as scary as the idea of Brutus wiping your game data or freezing your game or somehow corrupting your game data. I think that's on par with that, right? And another glitch or deliberate Easter egg, whatever you want to call it, that was put in the GameCube game that freaked me out, even knowing what was going to happen, it freaked me out. 
I was at the same friend's house. Uh, this friend of mine had Animal Crossing before I had a GameCube, so I would go play all the GameCube games at his house. And there was this thing where, so in order to visit your friend's town in the first Animal Crossing, you had to have a GameCube with two different memory cards. Your town was saved onto your memory card. So you'd put your town in memory card slot A and their town in memory card slot B, and you would talk to Porter the monkey and you would take the train to go visit your friend's town. There was some condition for this happening. I believe it was going to your friend's town and then not saving and quitting and then booting up your town again was the condition, but I'm not entirely sure on that. But there was something that you could do that would trigger this to happen and it would replace your face with the face of the gyroids, which are these hollow holes for eyes and a mouth. I'll put a picture up on the screen of what a character would normally look like versus the gyroid face glitch. And I've read that this was intentional to discourage you from not saving and quitting while you were visiting other people, but I'm inclined to believe they put it in as like a weird Easter egg just because the first game was so like, compared to the other games in the series, kind of aggressive and hostile towards children, which is why they got rid of Rossetti in later games and, and stuff like that. So the first game was scary and aggressive in a way that none of the other games have been since and never will be again. And I kind of miss that edge to the game. But at the same time, I can understand why they decided to make those particular changes to the game series. But since the face glitch thing was real, and since Rossetti freaking out on you was real, I would totally have believed this Brutus thing had you told it to me when I first got the game. I would have believed it, no question. <laughs> and I'm certain that there are other scary things in the game that, um, uh, kids have experienced or glitches or things like that that would freak you out. So speaking of video game glitches, since it's kind of spooky and Halloween-y, I think for me the scariest glitch I ever encountered while playing a video game was, uh, to be fair, I had pirated this game so it was probably on me for doing so. But back in the day, I had pirated The Sims 2 Complete Collection. I owned a lot of the games legitimately and then I got a new computer and I lost the disc somewhere along the way and didn't want to rebuy them all. So I pirated The Sims 2 Complete Collection and there was this horrible glitch where like, <laughs> It would replace the texture of the grass in the backyard with like skin textures, like sim human skin, like ears and face and flesh for your backyard. Like the whole backyard was just sim flesh. It was disturbing. And then like weird spikes would come out of my character's head and just go in every direction. It was a horrifying glitch. So needless to say, I never played that pirated Sims 2 ever again. <laughs> If a game glitches that badly, to me that game's like cursed, there's something wrong with it and I don't ever want to touch it ever again. It's horrifying. So if Animal Crossing ever did something like that, I'd probably have to walk away for a good long time. Luckily, Switch games don't seem to have glitches on that level. Like the most intense thing you can do in a Switch game is like clip through a wall or something like that. I don't think you're gonna get any horrifying texture swaps or even anything as scary as the gyroid face glitch in a game like New Horizons or something like that, right? I don't think we'll ever see anything actually genuinely scary in the games again. Like the only thing I can think of that's even remotely unsettling in New Horizons is a couple of the KK songs, which I'm using as background music in this video. Uh, even KK Swing has a little part that plays backwards that's a little bit unsettling, KK Dirge, KK Hypno. But that's about as scary and unsettling as this game gets. Oh, and being chased by tarantulas and scorpions, that can be a little scary depending on uh, your own fear level when it comes to spiders and scorpions, and also if they just catch you unaware and start chasing you. That, that can be a little bit scary too. But other than that, there's really nothing kind of spooky about <laughs> New Horizons. It's a very uh, polished, family-friendly, enjoyable experience. So tomorrow's video is much more of a New Horizons kind of video in that it's much more of a lighthearted subject, very cute, very friendly, very happy kind of Halloween, uh, that kind of vibe. And today's video, I wanted it to be of a, of a creepier subject matter with creepier music as not only an homage to like playground rumors and urban legends and funny stuff that kids would tell each other about video games growing up before looking this stuff up on the internet was commonplace but also like as a tribute to the original Animal Crossing and how much more intense and scary it was at times. It was a much more intimidating game, I think, uh, looking back on it now and the kind of dialogue and the kind of glitches and things that would happen in that game. It was a much scarier game overall, so I definitely wanted to pay tribute to it and this iconic urban legend on Devil's Night, the night before Halloween. 
Let me know in the comments below. First of all, what do they call tonight where you're from? Is there a name for it like Devil's Night or do you not have a name for it? Let me know that in the comments below. Also, let me know what playground urban legends and rumors about video games that you either believed in or tried to start or convince other people of when you were younger. Also, let me know what you think about this speed paint and what other kinds of speed paints you'd like to see from me in the future. I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your night and I will see you all tomorrow for another Halloween speed paint. Peace out.